So having seen uh, what is an inclusive democracy and why we need an inclusive democracy, the next important thing is uh, to see how an economic democracy, that is how this basic component of inclusive democracy would work, uh, what sort of institution we can imagine that would secure equal distribution of economic power. Uh, this is important, uh, not uh, in order to prescribe some kind of uh, uh, regime that should uh, follow in the future. Uh, this is uh, silly because, in fact, it is the democratic assemblies of the future that will decide the form uh, that the institution will take. What we can only do here is to give an idea of why such a system is feasible, how it can work, and make some proposals that would implement all the basic principles I uh, mentioned before. Um, the model, therefore, of economic democracy that I'm going to explain in a moment um, represents also a synthesis, as uh, the whole project of inclusive democracy presents a synthesis. It represents a synthesis of two systems that we have known in the past, the planning system on the one hand and the uh, market system that we still have. Uh, the basic element of uh, the planning system or the basic aim, if you like, of the planning system was that it aimed at securing the meeting of basic needs uh, of our people. On the other hand, the basic element uh, that is uh, uh, produced or presented by supporters of the market system as its main strong point is freedom of choice. However, neither of the two systems has worked as in theory. That is, the planning system, the central planning system in the East has created uh, some conditions so that the basic need more or less of all people have been uh, met. But this did not mean any kind of economic democracy because, as I said before, the decisions were taken by uh, uh, the political elite. Nor the market system uh, does uh, satisfy the uh, supposed advantage of uh, freedom of choice because it's ridiculous to talk about freedom of choice when basic needs have not been met.